to fight the scarlet hand, of course, Granny said as she tossed chunks of her dinner to her four impatient puppies. Since the master rose, we've been one of the main fronts in the battle for human freedom. There are other units scattered around the world, and I've been leading the charge. That's how I got my little nickname. Truth is, without seven of the brave members of the army, we wouldn't stand a chance. The master and his hand are relentless. But how did it get this bad? Daphne asked as she glanced around at the rough camp. They plundered the whole wonders, the grown-up Sabrina explained. They opened every door and took everything and took anything of value. What they didn't take, they set free. There were horrible things behind some of those doors. It threw the town to chaos. She shared a knowing look with the old woman. One of them tried to barbecue you earlier today. Puck added, Why didn't we stop it from happening? Sabrina wondered. What are we supposed to do, Sabrina? Granny rather said before breaking into a coffee fit. When she recovered, she continued. What could an old woman and two little girls do? You're forgetting Elvis, Daphne said. And we must not do that. He was a brave soul. These four pups are his great-grandchildren. Let me introduce you to John, Paul, George, and Ringo. The dogs raced over to Daphne and sat with begging eyes until the girl surrendered her venison steak. Yep, they're related, Daphne said as she hugged them all. What about Uncle Jake? The old woman shifted sadly in her chair. He was arrested and put into the fairy pole prison, she said softly. They gave him a trial and sentenced him to life, but he tried to escape and he was killed. I saw it, Sabrina cried. I saw that happen outside our window. He was shot with an arrow. Granny Rhoda shared a confused expression with the older woman and Puck. I don't remember that happening. I certainly don't remember it, the grown-up Sabrina replied. How can these things have occurred in the past? We don't remember them. Our Prince Charming didn't disappear. I never saw Uncle Jake's mother when I was young. We didn't just pop up in the future either. How long have you been here? Charming asked the girls. A couple of hours, Sabrina said. What about you? Three months. So, you know a future version of Prince Charming? Sabrina asked, doing her best to understand all the new information. No, I'm from the past. I mean, the present. It's all still very confusing. I went to for a walk after I lost the election to the Queen of Hearts. I wanted to clear my head, think of a way to change my fortunes, and then I found myself here. It took me several hours to figure out that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. It appears the same thing has happened to the two of you. The older Daphne shook her head. Something is happening back then that should have happened, she said. We believe it's creating tears in time. Tears in time? Daphne asked. Yes, they had doorways that suck people out of their time. They're not supposed to be possible, but whatever or whoever is causing them is somehow blending their future and our present. And maybe all of our past, Sabrina interrupted. We saw a band of Indians attack Baba Yaga this afternoon. I mean, 15 years ago. Now, I know that never happened, the older Daphne said. So this is worse than I suspected, Granny Rhoda replied. When the two of you vanished, did you see a storm come out of nowhere? Charming asked. Sabrina nodded. And there was one where I saw Uncle Jake die. And when the Indians appeared and attacked Baba Yaga, Daphne ended. By the way, where is she? The witch was made while the first of the resistance to die, Granny Rhoda said. She made a foolish error when she destroyed her guardians. She never took time to replace them and left her vulnerable. The scarlet hen cornered her in the forest and killed her, but not before she took out nearly 40 of them. The house ran off, Puck said. We found it cowering at the top of Mount Taurus and we've been using it ever since. Maybe all this has something to do with the case we're walking on, Serena said. Watching this older version of her sister standing cold in distance, away from the group, she shuddered to think what had happened to steal the happiness from Daphne or what had caused a horrible mark on her face. What case? Granny Rutter asked. Someone's been stealing magic items. 
the one of Merlin, the wonder clock, and some water from the fountain of youth have all been ripped off. I remember that case, Granny Rada said. We never solved it. Unbelievable. Rada Grimm would never let a mystery go unsolved. Charming said with a hint of disdain. There were other things, urgent things that needed our attention, the old man said. The taxes, Sabrina asked. Her older set of nodded in agreement. Yes, among others. Uncle Jake had his hands full of Baba Yaga. After that, things got even worse and we just had, and we just never had time to do any more investigating. What got worse? Sabrina asked suspiciously. The adults were silent for a long, heartbreaking moment. They looked at one another with strained expressions, as if weighing how much pain the next words might cause. They should see the house, the older Daphne said. Don't you think this is a little harsh? Granny Rhoda asked. If we don't show them the truth, they will go and discover it for themselves. You remember how we used to be? We were always running off in the middle of the night. We can't allow them to do that. They wouldn't survive. It's best that we feed their curiosity, no matter how painful it might be. It may be. She's right, Rhoda. Charming said, they'll sneak out and this time they might not come back. If they were to be killed, we would die with them. They are us, the grown-up Daphne added. The older Sabrina shrugged. I guess it's for the best. Sabrina and Daphne stared into each other's eyes. Suddenly, they shared their fear for what they were about to see. What could be so bad? Show us, Sabrina said. Sabrina then felt the house make another abrupt turn. She glanced out the window and saw abandoned homes and forests charred with black smoke. Roads were ripped in half and littered with abandoned cars. After a while, the creepy shack came to a lumbering stop. We're here, the future Daphne said as she glanced through the window. We can't stay long. The dragon circled the area in 15-minute cycles and we don't know when the last one started. Granny Rod explained. Sabrina felt the house lower. The old park came from the other room with his crossbow and arrows in hand. He kicked open the door, took a peek outside, and gestured for everyone to follow. Sabrina and Daphne shuffled outside with charming close behind. And then they saw it. The plot of land that had been their grandmother's home. The house and any sign that had ever existed was gone. Not even trees had been left behind. Instead, an enormous castle made from black stone sat on the property. It had two high towers and a drawbridge over a moat dug around the perimeter of the building. On top of one of the towers, a black flag with a blood-red handprint in its center fluttered in the wind. The air smelled of sofa. Sabrina could feel tears run down her face, and for the first time in her life, she didn't try to hide them. I haven't been here in 15 years. The old Sabrina said, Never thought I'd be strong enough to look at, out at it. How do we fix this? Sabrina interrupted. Fix it? Her older self said. I don't know if you can fix it. You have to send us back, Daphne said, her own face wet with tears. Now that we know what's going to happen, we can change it. Chummy nodded. My plan exactly, and we're working on our way to do just that. The tears in time pop up all over the place by the time we get to one has already closed. Then we're stuck here? Sabrina exclaimed. No, the future Daphne said. We may have a way to predict when they come. Sabrina noticed something unspoken pass between Charming and Daphne's future self. Whatever it was, it made the older Daphne tense. People, get back into the house now! Puck shouted as he pointed toward the sky. Sabrina looked up and gasped. High in the charcoal sky, another dragon sailed overhead. It was green, black, and red, and puffs of smoke drifted out of its wide reptilian snout. Its jaw shook the earth with a boom, and from its gruesome jaws came a torrent of liquid flames that turned a nearby stuff into black ash. The older Sabrina helped Granny wheel her chair into Baba Yaga's house. The rest of the group followed and slammed the door behind them. House, let's move it, the older Sabrina shouted, and the building once again rose to its feet and raced into the woods. 
can we all run that? Sabrina asked as she watched the dragon blast another nearby tree. No, the older Daphne said, rushing to the window and shoving the doors aside. She threw it open and pointed a long, thin one outside. All we can do is fight. Give me some water, she cried. Water blasted out of the one like it was a firefighter's hose. Unfortunately, the woman's aim was off and it hit the beast in the chest. She cussed herself and shook the one angrily. Not feeling well today, Marshmallow, Puck said. Because if so, I could go and I could go out and fight it myself. I'm tempted to let you, she replied. And don't call me that ridiculous nickname. Definitely stuck her tongue out at her elder self. Hey, Cranky, I like my nickname. The future Daphne looked at her younger self and a small, almost imperceptible smile crept onto her face. And she turned back to the open window. Give me some water! A torrent of water exploded into the sky like a geyser and this time it hit the dragon squarely in the mouth. The beast tried to roar but only a breathy squeak came out. The loss of its most deadly weapon seemed to hinder the dragon's ability to fly as well. It fell to the ground hard and disappeared from view. Nice shooting of me, Daphne said. Unfortunately, it's only temporary, Granny Rodder said. Let's hope that we can put some distance between us and it before it reignites its pilot light. Sabrina and Daphne were given two cards to sleep in. Without Daphne by her side, Sabrina felt strange and lonely, but most of all, concerned that her little sister was feeling the same way. She was about to ask Daphne if she wanted to talk, but a low, rumbling snore came from the little girl. Apparently, the shock of their current situation wasn't causing Daphne any loss of sleep. Child, Tremmy said softly from his car across the room. Sabrina sat up and rubbed her eyes. I'm awake! Have you seen snow? Sabrina nodded. She's worried about you. Charming nodded as if he shared her feelings. I need to know. How? I need to know. How did Daphne get hurt? I mean, the older Daphne. How did she get that scar? It was my fault. I asked her to help me find something. It was dangerous and we ran into trouble. Charming said. What kind of trouble? Nottingham. Sabrina shuddered, imagining the wicked share of a serpentine dagger. She was helping me recover something, Charming said. Something that will help us go home. But Nottingham was guarding it, and he, well... Just then, the older Daphne entered the tent. It appears our little mission has paid off, she said to Charming. I may have found another turn time. Can you tell us when and where we'll be? Sabrina asked eagerly. The Fairy Polanyi Cemetery. We need to leave now. The adults led the children through the cemetery. There were headstones as far as the eye could see and a crumbling mausoleum leaning precariously across the path. The weeds had grown over most of the burial plots. None of the cemetery's lamps were working, so the group had to rely on the bluish light of the full moon. It gave everything and everyone a ghostly quality. I cannot guarantee the tear will make will take you back home, Odo Daphne said. In fact, it could put you into an even more dangerous situation. What could be more dangerous than running from dragons all day long? Sabrina said. Appearing in the past during the witch trials for one, imagine popping up in a Puritan camp and being burned at the stake. Or you could be sent further into the future where my sister and I are dead and there's no one to protect you from the scarlet hand. That's just to be the end of this video. I'll see you later. Goodbye.